Turn it hard. I'm sure it's already hard. You're fine. It's already hard. I'm not going to make it. Can you watch the front? Yeah, I am already looking at the front. Well, nope, you're not going to make it. Aloha everybody and welcome to On Island Time. The clip you just watched was at Scatterjoy Acres where we had the first challenge of our cr cross country trip. Now keep watching to find out how we got out of this and another problem we encountered in Colorado. Oh, and let's not forget about the ghost we saw. Okay, it's a go. I'm ready. Looking good, looking good. Turn it hard. I'm sure it's already hard. You're fine. It's already hard. I'm not going to make it. Can you watch the front? Yeah, I am already looking at the front. Well, nope, you're not going to make it. Okay, go ahead. There you go. There, there, there. Back, 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 back. Right there. Yeah, I did think I could straighten it out before. Okay, straighten it out. Lee. There you go. A little bit more to your right. Okay, there you go. Good. Keep coming. Okay, you need to go to the right. You're going to miss the bridge. Right, you're going to miss the bridge. Well, you're going to hit the side of the bridge, and we don't want to do that. Okay, go to the right more. you got plenty of clearance over here on the right. Okay, that's good. Come on, come straight. A little bit to the left. All right, forward. 
little bit more to the left. Alright, so. Alright, let me take a look at the Jeep. Okay, Jeep looks pretty good. Should I straighten out my wheels and come straight? No, because your back end still needs to come over. Okay, so you want me to come forward now with everything as it is? Yeah, come forward. Okay, slow, slow, slow. Alright, keep coming. Alright, uh... Okay, to the left. Other left. There you go. Alright, come forward a little bit. Keep coming. Keep coming. Turn it harder, you're gonna hit the fence. Okay, looks like we're good.
Now Scatterjoy Acres has two very narrow bridges and we crossed over the first one when we spent the night. We were very close to the second bridge when they brought us into our spot and we needed to make some very sharp turns to get over it and because of our length we didn't think it would be possible. So instead we decided to try and make a u-turn and go over the same bridge we crossed when we entered Scattered Joy. Uh, that was a big mistake. So we were too long and we had to back up. And it was no easy feat. Let me tell you, with a Jeep in tow behind, it was not an easy feat. So we do not recommend backing up while flat towing a vehicle at all. Well, as you can see, when backing up uh, with a tow vehicle, uh, the tow vehicle's wheels can turn and buckle the tow bar very quickly. So it is necessary to hold uh, the steering wheel of the towed vehicle and keep it from spinning. Since the distance that we had to back up really wasn't that far, uh, we we decided to uh, use this method. And while uh, I held the steering wheel, I gave directions to Sherry and she backed the RV up and we were successful. And after a few minutes of getting the RV uh, realigned, uh, we were ready to, to move over that bridge and because it was so narrow, really careful alignment was necessary to keep the RV as straight as possible and with some luck, uh, we made it without having to back up the RV again. So after arriving at Bear Creek Lake Park, we disconnected the Jeep, and when I tried to start it, nothing happened. Not a thing. So we had to leave the Jeep in the middle of the road uh, in the park, and then we maneuvered the, the RV into the space, and then we maneuvered by pushing the Jeep into the space. Um, that was a bit of a trick because there was an uphill incline, so it took both of us to get that uh, the Jeep moving and trying to steer it at the same time. That was a lot of fun. Go. Yep. See if I can get it started. <laughs> oh, he forgot the key. <laughs> the Jeep died when we got here to Bear Creek. And we didn't discover that until we unhooked. Gotta fail. And today's Memorial Day. So if we have to call somebody enough. out, it's going to be expensive. <clears throat> Not enough juice? Nope. You hear it clicking? Yeah, I hear it clicking. I saw the flight lights turned off. Gonna try it again? Yeah, try it again. 
Oh, the lights are on. <gasps> Almost. <clears throat> Turn everything off on the inside, huh? I did. Okay. And the fan was running and everything else. And it's oh. down to 50% now. I hear it boosting. That's what the click is. Yeah, I Usually figured. you press the button to boost it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's actually doing anything. It just doesn't have enough juice to start it. I'm gonna charge it some more. I don't know if that char actually charges the battery or not. Are you gonna leave the top open then? Yes, I'm going to leave it open. And the just um, leave that there. And the um, door's open too? No, it's not open. You locked it? Well, I can. He's not worried about it. So he's going to charge the uh, the booster more because we're down to 50% on it. And uh, we'll see what happens. So we used a, uh, a booster battery, as you saw in the video. Um, and that battery booster was fully charged. And we were unable to start the Jeep at all. So we, we, we were wondering about how we might get uh, the Jeep started. And at about that time, there was a cleaning crew that showed up kind of in front of our space. They were across the way from us to clean the comfort station there. So I went over to ask them to see if they could help us jump the Jeep. And they said that they could not, but the Ranger on duty would most likely be able to help. So they radioed the Ranger and in about 10 minutes, he arrived. He also used a booster battery to start our Jeep. And just as we had trouble with ours, he had a problem with his. So after fiddling with the booster battery, the Ranger decided to give us a jump from his truck. That worked and we were in business. Thank goodness. After leaving the Jeep running for about 30 minutes, uh, we had been looking very intently for a place where we could buy another battery, and that would be AutoZone. AutoZones will also test your battery for you. Um, the employee at the AutoZone battery tested our battery, and they proceeded to tell us that our battery was good. And it was just fine, nothing wrong with it. So we were left to wonder. So. We appreciate the honesty of the AutoZone employee who helped us, but this would not be the last time we have an issue with Jeep battery dying. Oh no. And with the dead Jeep battery still fresh in our minds, we headed off to Walmart, which was very close, like maybe a hop, skip and a jump from where the AutoZone was, where we purchased a battery charger. So after leaving the Walmart, we returned to the RV to check in on Tippy and Izzy and then decided to head over to Camper's Paradise, Camping World. <laughs> so we get over to Camping World and we spend what was roughly a, a, a good hour walking around and we we're drooling over all this stuff that we could buy and thinking about how we could use it and improve uh, our RV and you know just the little things that uh, can help. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a video later on featuring some of the items that we bought that you might be interested in the two in as well we really 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 appreciate you watching our videos and could you help us out by clicking on the like and subscribe it really helps us out and it's absolutely free yes free free is always good so also Besides clicking like and subscribe, click that bell to get notified when we release a new video.
So while we were at Camping World, we got a recommendation to go and see Red Rocks. And that's with an S, that is intentional, Red Rocks, because it's Red Rocks. So Red Rocks, uh, she told us, was a must for us to see.
we had just enough time to fit in a bike ride on the beautiful bike paths that surround the park. All the bike paths are paved and very well maintained. And along the way, we encountered some breathtaking sights.
at about the end of our ride, a skateboarder arrived and passed me up while I was doing about 10 miles an hour. A few minutes later, he passed Sherry up. So not wanting to be outdone by someone on a skateboard, electric skateboard at that, I went ahead and I hit the throttle thinking I'm gonna catch up with this guy. And that was just not gonna happen. He kept pulling away and pulling away and pulling away. And so finally I just gave up. So when you're camping, you never know just who you might run into. After we returned from Camping World, we noticed a very familiar sight. It was another wraith. And by happenstance, their color scheme on the outside was the same as ours. So either by happenstance or divine providence, we were destined to meet the owners. Hey, welcome to On Island Time. And tonight we are with Kirk and Nancy Cunningham. <laughs> We met them today. They have a 2019 Wraith and we have a 2022 Wraith. And as we were driving out to go someplace, we saw them and it was like, oh my gosh, it's our cousin. <laughs> so we got together. Nancy came out and started talking to us as I backed up to uh, take a picture to, pay so to post on the Nexus group. And we've been just talking story tonight, and it's been such a blast and such a blessing to get to know you guys. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And Absolutely. so much fun. And you know what? They are going to be at the Nexus Rally in yes. September. Yes. So we'll get to see them again. So anyways, keep following us, and you know our slogan, Ride, Ride the, the wave. wave. See you next time on Island Time. See you later. So there's a lot to do at Bear Creek Lake State. I, I almost did it. It's not State Park. <laughs> no, it's not. And it said that they have a sign on their entrance, um, entrance cabin, I guess you can call it, that says, we are not a state park. Yes, yes. So I almost made that mistake. So I I'm guess I'm not the only one to do it. So, but anyways, there is a ton of stuff to do while you're there. Um, you know, one of the things that we enjoyed while we were there was bike riding. Uh, we had a really good time uh, on, a, on our trip. We were probably gone in about an hour or so. Easily. Easily, yeah. And uh, while we were gone out, um, we passed by a lake and we saw some people fishing. So we know that that's something that you can do there as well. Um, of course, hiking because of the pass. And we were fortunately able to see some horseback riders. Yeah, it was really cool to see the horseback riders. Um, this is the first park that I've been to in a while that offers horseback riding within the park itself. And I just want to say that the hiking, not all the trails are paved. It's um, the biking trails are paved, um, but there are also regular dirt paths, birth, uh, dirt trails that you can hike along. They also have archery, um, archery, those big old target thingies that, you know, you could, you shoot your arrow into, um, hay, those big old archery hays, hay, hay stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> archery hays. So yeah, they do provide, uh, that you bring your own equipment, it looked like, and you have a place to practice your archery. And there's also picnic areas. Yeah, there was a really nice picnic area right along the beach as we were come as you come in. Yeah, there really was. And yeah. it was a beautiful it, there were several beautiful days there while we were there and that area was just packed. People enjoyed using the picnic areas and the beach. There's a couple of beaches there that they went swimming at um where we saw people fishing. There was no swimming there and the campsites. The campsites are really, really nice. And I had never heard of a yurt <laughs> until we were researching where to stay. And this place talked about their yurts. So if you don't know what a yurt looks like, here you go.
The yurts are, are rentable. Um, I don't know if it's year round, but uh, you will find them throughout. I think they had like eight of them there. I think so. There's about eight of them that you can rent. Uh, the yurts are, I believe they have all the amenities except for running water, which means no bathroom facilities. Um, but don't take my word for that. Double check. They reminded me of really big tents is what they reminded me of. So you will never know what you might see on a cross country trip. And for us, it was a ghost encounter. stop at Wiggins rest area and as we were coming into uh, probably about 20-30 miles out from the rest area there was a storm that started to come through um, just some light rain but by the time we took the exit and got off and parked in the rest area it was raining pretty good so we decided to to wait it out because that was a scheduled rest stop for us and for our dogs and lo and behold as I was pulling into the rest area I saw a super seat. Mike said yeah he didn't think it was but as as I pulled into the parking spot two places away from it we discovered it was a Nexus rain so I took a picture of it posted it on the Nexus group and uh, as it was raining, we waited for the rain, there was a lull, I hurried up and hooked up the girls, got out and spoke to the owner who came around, and, um, you know, he was just, I said it was really nice to see a relative, so I don't know if he read that we were next to him on the uh, Nexus Facebook page, or if he saw us pull in, but it was really great to see him, so a big shout out, I don't know that he's going to at one point or another, but um, it was kind of cool to see a relative. I forgot to tell you, it was a ghost, and it was really pretty. So, I guess we're at the point where we talk about three things we like and three things we dislike. So, you start with the dislike, hun. Alright, so we were there at the end of May. Now, May is always one of those finicky months um, where you can have rain, you can have sunshine and heat and warmth, or you can have sunshine and cold. Well, we had sunshine, but it was cold. And it was really cold. I had to wear a coat. <laughs> and you'll see that 
you, if you remember, you saw you saw me in a coat when I was working on the on the Jeep trying to jump the battery. Um, it was cold. And remember, we're in Denver, so we're also a mile above sea level. Yeah, so that was one one of my dislikes. <laughs> my dislike is there were not enough trees around. I love trees and there were very few trees um, in yeah, the they're camp. They're more like bushes. <laughs> <laughs> very true. They were more like big bushes. Um, but there were no trees to provide shade in, in the campsite area, the camping area. And I really miss the trees. So that was my dislike. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that either. Um, I would have wished for trees as well. But I guess that's something um, that that high up, maybe they don't grow as well or something. I don't know. Um, do you want to do the third one? You want me to do it? I'll let you do it. Okay, so this is, I mean, everything that we've talked about, our dislikes, are not a negative on the campsite. The campsites are beautiful. Um, but one of the, my, one of my, the last dislike that we have is that it was really, really dry. And it was so dry, in fact, that we wanted to have a fire and in order to have a fire, you have to have a bucket. And that bucket needs to be full of water and it needs to be very close to the camp uh, fire wherever, you, wherever it's located so that if anything happens, you can put it out. Um, so that would be my third dislike. And also if the camp fire was still going and you wanted to go to bed, you had to put the fire out. You could not let it burn down to the embers and just leave it like a lot of people do in state parks mm -hmm. they they leave their fire running and they go to bed and the fire will still be burning and then it burns down to the embers embers you could not do that here you had to have that bucket of water right there and put out your fire before you went to bed so how about the three three things we do like the three you, things we like yay <laughs> you start <laughs> yeah so one of the things I like is that there's a ton of stuff to do, not only in the park, but around the park as well. Um, as you saw, Red Rocks, that's that's one of the uh, attractions. There was another place too, like a dinosaur ridge, yeah. or a dinosaur backbone, or something of that sort. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, but there's, there's a lot to do in the Denver area. And, and even though you're not in Denver proper, you're really, really, really close. In fact, you can see the downtown Denver area um, from the campsites. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Well, we could see Home Depot. Oh, yeah, that's right. We could. Right. That, this Home Depot is off in the distance. We could see it. Because well, there was no trees. <laughs> it was up on the hill not far from us. So that's where we saw Home Depot at. So yeah. yes, there is a lot to do and I do agree with that. But what I really liked about it was the campsites and the site, the, the rest of the camping sites, all of the camping sites were very neat in appearance and they were very well defined. They reminded me of the campsites at Prophetstown where yeah. they have the, um, the timbers defining your camp space and I think they had timbers or something very similar. Yeah, there was something around the exterior of the site. Right, and it defined your campsite, and they're big. They they were very big campsites, so I really like that. And the campground was very neat. They're, they kept it up very, very well, and it, it was tidy. Yeah, so I guess it's time for the third like. Yep. Um... I would say that we both agree that because there is a large amount of trails and hiking and biking, matter of fact, I think one of the trails goes between Denver and somewhere else. Well, and yeah. So it's miles and miles and miles of bike trails. And from our campsite, we were told you could use the bike trails to get to downtown Denver, which is really cool. Yeah, we didn't do that, um, fortunately, because we were we were constrained with time. We didn't get to the bikes bike ride until later in the afternoon, so that prevented us from going a really large distance. Plus, we weren't really sure 
where we would be going, uh, um, especially without a map. Yeah, we were not um, provided a map, and I don't know that. Um, I don't know that the entrance yeah. uh, cabin provided that or even had those available. So probably if we went online to take a look, we probably would have found a map. Yeah, probably all trails. We could have used that. Oh, yeah. Um, they have an offline mode where you can download it and use it as a GPS. Now, that's true. We didn't think um, about that. But still, the 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 bike trails right next to the campsite, they intertwine with the uh, the trails of the golf course that the golf course carts use. So and they're pretty well marked and you can tell where you're at, um, whether you're on a bike trail or you're, whether you're on a golf cart trail. You want to stay off the golf cart trails. Or sometimes there was there was a short uh, period of time where we had to share yeah. the trail with the golf carts. And it did say golf carts left, bikes on the right or whatever. But it gave you directions on who was supposed to be on which side of the trail. Um, those are our three likes and our three dislikes of Bear Creek Lake Park. Lake Park. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. want to skip the lake part. But yes, those are our three likes, our three dislikes about Bear Creek Lake Park in Denver, Colorado. And... Actually, it's Lakewood. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> A suburb of Denver. Um, so anyways, I guess until next time... Ride, ride the, the wave. wave. We'll see you on island time. Aloha, everybody. Bye. <laughs>